Gig Gab, episode 387 for Wednesday, June 21st, 2023. And welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. I know that we said we might not be here this week, but surprise, we're here. And here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. How are we today, Mr. Kent? We're doing quite well, Dave. For for us doing a double this week, I think I think we're doing pretty well. Well, that's it. Yeah, we're recording this not too long after we recorded 386, but we're going to wait a little bit to put it out to uh, space things because of the travel we mentioned, uh, which is something we mentioned last week. The other thing that we mentioned last week was, Paul, you surprised me and asked me what the history of Bitter Pill was. And as I was sort of fumbling in, into answering this question that I did not prepare. I mean, I, I lived through uh, parts of it, so I was able to share that, but I was not, I did not know you were going to ask me that question. I don't even know if you knew you were going to ask me that question, but as I was fumbling into the <laughs> the discussion, I said, well, it would really be good to, uh, to have Billy on the show sometime to, to share a lot of things, including perhaps answering that question. And so without further ado, I'd love to introduce you all to Billy Butler, from Bitter Pill and everything else that uh, that Billy's ever done. Billy, thanks for joining us. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what that's, what that's an introduction. That's the least you've ever said. I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I, was, I was trying to think of something clever, and I was like, you know what's clever? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> there you go. Yep. That's pretty much us week after week after week. Oh, I know. I listen every week. Yeah, I know you are. You are one of our one of the most loyal listeners that I know in yeah. person. Yeah. yeah. Well, I dig it, and and uh, I know you, and and I got to keep you in check. So. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I get texts from Billy all the time. He's like, you know, you got this wrong. Like, <laughs> it's yeah, true. That's no, funny. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Billy, you're a you're a rock and roll cellist. Um. No, I mean, yeah, sort of. Um. I've, I've seen the videos. I would say bo- all of that is accurate. I would say that. Yeah, I would say that's accurate. That's yeah. the, I'm definitely no never going to forget that, Paul, you said that, and I'm going to say it all the time now. No, no, I, I never even thought of that. Sure. Yeah. I like well, that. Term. I mean, he's got attitude. Yeah. He's got grit. He's he's digging in on every, um, what will we say? Every stroke? Every, every, every pluck. Yeah. Every, every pluck. pluck. I mean, yeah. I play, I play yeah. bass. I play bass too, and I generally don't use a pick unless... You know, it's a rock song, and then I'll dig in with a yeah. pick. But uh, it's I play it like a bass. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you 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 fill the role of the bass player. Yes. In it it it, it, it musically, instrumentally, right. you fill the role of the bass player in Bitter Pill, and and I'm always well. It's tricky. Pleased, but surprised at how quickly we locked in on that. Mm-hmm. In that it's not you never really played bass with a drummer before. No, we had pl- you had played p- so Billy's a piano player, yeah. right? That was your first instrument. Yeah. Is well, that right? piano and guitar, but piano is is my first instrument. Okay, yeah. Yeah. and I mean you've been playing oh, piano. Since I was, I could stand up. Yeah, yeah, and and like you read music on piano and mm-hmm. all that. Like, yep. You, yeah. So I'm not a great reader. Okay, uh, like like Danny Elfman says, he's like I can read as fast as I write. Okay, that's fine. You know, sure. I'm not a sit down. Band. Sight read. Yeah, unless I know the song, well, kind of. Then I can comp a little that's bit. That's different. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I know a melody well enough sure. where it fits in the chord where I can, oh, right. Because yeah. I have a little dyslexia. I have a lot of dyslexia, but it affects me musically trying to read. Oh, that, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. So I can get a piece of music and I have to sit down and, and you know, look at it and read it, play it. And then, bam, it's there. Yeah, if I I find when I'm reading music, like drum charts are the, the that's the only thing I can actually sight read. Right. Um, but when I'm reading, I can sight read something, except for the parts that I've never seen before. And I don't mean mm-hmm. that I haven't seen that piece of music. It could be a piece of music I've never even heard before. But everything is a pattern. Almost everything. Ninety eight percent of it are pictures that I've seen before yeah. on, a pa- on a on a musical page. And I'm like, oh, okay, I know what that picture, right. I know how to make my hands and feet do that picture. And then 
a picture will come up that I've never seen before. And that's where I have to be like, oh, what is this? And so when I get a score, if I've got a site, read it, or even if I don't, I flip through very quickly, like paid, you know, the, you would sure. think I was just like yep. leafing through it, but I'm looking for those things that stand out the to me. Familiar like, things. And then the it's like, what's things. that? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm so. the same way with, as an actor reading, reading lines. Interesting. Um, I have to read it at least once because of my dyslexia things go backwards yeah, and yeah. i mispronounce words and i miss words i miss periods and commas but if i can read through it once or twice you know your brain remembers things in pictures yes so i see the 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 picture in my head of the page um and then i don't know something in my brain i think it's just from years of doing it and, yeah. and training uh it's the same with music Yes. You know, once it's there, it's there. It's there. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Can we just pause there? Because there might be a little nugget of information because we struggle. You know, Dave, you shared something about about some uh, you know method for memorizing lyrics a while ago. And, you know, I, I am only aware that once I my, once my brain knows that it's in the pad, it'll it will never commit it to memory. I oh, don't right. know what that is. But oh, once the crutch but, is there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, but, but my son-in-law, who who works at TED, tells me the story about the TED talk about the world champion memory guy. And so this guy was a reporter who covered a a galactic memory competition, and in a year decided he wanted to compete in it. So he went from not knowing anything about this hmm. to wow. to being a right, and and he then he gave a TED talk about it, huh. and um. And Did the, he have to the, read from notes? Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> well, this is the story, actually. So the story is he's giving a, a TED Talk, and he's looking at his hand, and um, and everybody's like, what the hell? The memory guy's reading from his hand. <laughs> but then there's a camera angle where you look and see there's nothing on his hand. Oh, he and, was, he, and then he goes on to explain it that he mm -hmm. says, once you create a picture in your mind— you know, of whatever that is. And he, I guess he was like, this is my hand in my childhood bedroom. And, you know, the, and, mm -hmm. you know, yep. and then he started free associating all this stuff. And this is how he's, you know, remembering 72 decks of cards order, that type of thing. And it's just, it's totally fascinating. So anyway, tell me, tell me what it is you just told people that they can do in order to memorize lyrics. Uh, exactly. You know what, you know what, as, as a performer, uh, not just m music, but as an actor as well, um, it repetition is the key. Repetition mm. is the key. Repetition is the key. And along with that is doing something physical along with it, right? So when you when you learn a song on the guitar, you don't have to remember where your fingers go, right? You know where the, yep. the chord is because you've yep. done it so many times, but it's also a physical uh, muscle memory there. And learning lyrics is the same thing. You know, I, I learn lyrics, like my daughter, <laughs> who sings the lead uh, in, in Bitter Pill, and she's a writer and, and a musician as well, she couldn't memorize lyrics. And she still struggles a little bit with it. Yeah. And, and it's, I think that's kind of an anxiety thing about what- She but, had to run off stage the other night in the middle of Tom Waits because Mike, Mike made the decision. He's like, we're playing Get Behind the Mule- and Emily's oh, like, no, I don't have the lyrics. She has never memorized the lyrics to that. But she knows. But she knows it. She knows she them. Does. If she didn't have them, she would. They would be fine. Yeah, yeah. But she believes she needs them, and right. I, and I don't mean to call her out. Like we. Oh no, I'll I'm call the her same out. way. I'm her father. I'll call her out. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I, but I don't really, mean to sit here on my high, high and mighty chair. Like sure. I'm the same way. Right. If I know that I have it. I, 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 well, like learning lines, right? I do. I've done one man shows that are two hours long that I had to learn all. That's just yeah. me up there for two hours. I, I've, and I've people been like, in those. I've been on on stage with you. Like, yeah, absolutely. With like rectones. tones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. swore. There it is. I get to click. Darn I knew it. we were going to click the box tonight. And Billy's like, "Oh no, 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 no! It's going to be totally fine." I'm like, "It's fine. We can." I'm check usually the box. pretty good. Eva. I've been on rate like regular radio, and there. Yeah. You have to be really. Yeah, but now yeah. you relax. Like now we're now in I'm it. relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. But when I learn those lines, I'm doing something physical. I'm moving. Uh, uh, whether that's blocking that I'm given by the director or something I'm doing at home. Sure. But it, uh, attaching something physical to it uh, makes a big difference. And if you're trying to learn lyrics, you know, uh, uh, talking them, uh, understanding the what the lyrics are and where the story is going, 
Mm. If that makes sense, yeah, it's it's sometimes it's harder sometimes when the the lyrics are non sequitur, but like when, com, come come together by the Beatles, ugh, a perfect example. I cannot, <laughs> I like it doesn't matter which way you sing those lyrics because there's no story being told there. It's oh. like little couplets of stories. Timothy Leary's campaign song. <sighs> That's what that was. Yeah. That, that song was? Yes. Oh, no. Kidding. That's why John Lennon wrote it. I mean, it's a terrible campaign song. It's a great song. It's a, oh, it's I great, tell you, it's a great, I tell you. Yeah. It's a great Timothy Leary song. It yeah. is. Yeah. And then it's he wound up f- going to jail or whatever. He couldn't, he couldn't run anyway. It's one of my favorite Beatles tunes. Uh, he, but yeah. There are um, a Tom Waits, uh, our song Tom Waits for None. Yeah. There's a story being told there, but each section of the, sto- the, the lyrics can be totally, doesn't matter where you sing it. So it makes it a little more difficult, and I've gone up on those lyrics. I don't know how many times. Yeah, for real. And you've you flipped. You've lost a verse here. I lost there. a verse. And yeah, I flipped yeah. a verse. Yeah, and you wrote them. I, yeah. There's no <laughs> excuse, man. <laughs> I will say, like there, but there is that yeah. you having the crutch. I, I'll never. I don't know why this memory is the one that comes to mind. But Paul, you were there. We played at Slim's with the MacWorld All Star Band one year, and I had put. Route 66 on the set list. And we were playing it like the stones and we were in and we did the first verse, first chorus. And the way the Mac world all-star band worked was if you suggested the song, (laughs) you were the one singing it (laughs) unless you could convince somebody else, but you know, it was on you to find a singer and it was mostly, it was you. And, uh, and so, you know, we, we played it. We, we, first verse, first chorus, no problem. We're in like the, the, you know, the interlude post chorus, two measures or whatever as, as the second verse is coming up. And I'm like, I have no recollection <laughs> what it's even, what the second verse is I even about. Oh my God. Do I hate that? And I was, just, and all I did was I was like, I'm just going to start singing the melody and I'm going to focus more on how I'm hitting my snare drum. And I'm going to just see what happens. Mm. And the words just came out of my mouth. Yep. And that's, it was like, that's muscle you know, memory and yep. you know trusting yourself. Yeah, and if you the thing is, it wasn't going to be like I'm not saving lives up there. No. Like and it's going to be fine gonna either be, way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it but it was just like oh look at that there there they are. I've made up words. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and oh at, yeah. At shows uh, and in theater, like I've never heard you do any of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fun part is when I'm singing a harmony with you. And then you I have ha- to, you don't have to know the words. You just have I just, to hit the notes. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, one of the reasons why singing harmony is you don't want to enunciate anything. Yeah. But if you don't get the harmony right, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, wait, wait. We, we're going to have to do something here. If you guys are going to do this, I need to know. Billy. Yes. So Dave never auditioned because you guys got to know each other through, through theater, right? Oh no, he auditioned. Yeah. All I just, right. I just didn't know it. <laughs> well, I, I mean, tech- I, I want to hear the story of the beginning of what you were observing when my buddy Dave walked in, set up, started playing. I want to know everything that was going through your head as you were observing this guy. Like, we, we like, who's this guy? Are we like, oh, this guy's the real deal? Or you were, what, what came in your mind when he, you first laid eyes on Dave Hammond? So the, the, just to pave, I'm pretty, I'm nearly certain because we just had this conversation yeah, at, right. at my house, but the first time we met was a rehearsal, the first rehearsal with the band and cast for the musical Next to Normal. Yeah, which is and, a rock musical. But, but, a rock right. but Billy did not cast you for this. Billy no, did no, not. I did not. This. No, no. But that's the first time I met him. And I, I was like, I like this guy. This guy's cool. <laughs> we did uh, fight about my, like, not fight. Um, oh, no, we, we always fight. I, well, that's the yeah. thing is it's, it's, it was like, but we, you, you came up to me and, uh, and, and like after the first act, like we played sure. through the first act yeah. the, and the way Tiny it was little room. Too. T- yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you came up to me and you're like, you're going to need to mute the shit out of that snare drum, you know, or that, that kick drum. Yeah. yeah. You just, you just swore. I know. Well, you already did. Oh, all right. So it's okay. all fine. Uh, I, I know that I'm checking the box either way, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's what you said, which is yeah. why, why I quoted you. Well, you uh, were really nailing that snare. No, it was the kick drum. Oh, it wasn't the, the snare. It, okay. it was you're, you were like you're gonna have to mute the shit out of that kick yeah. drum because because the player's ring isn't gonna and and was, you were right. Was, like you knew yeah. the you knew I the acoustics the room. of the room. Yeah, right. And I'm and, a sound guy. And yeah. right, we're yeah. both. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was where that was the first thing we said to each other was yeah. like this convert yeah. this super like. I think we, I was like, "You're killing it." 
Yeah, too. maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't were. antagonistic no, or no, no, anything, no, no. but it was no, it very was, quickly we're going to get to the heart of what I, we're doing here. I together. think what happened is is we geeked out. Nerded, yes, nerded that's what out. it was. Yeah, that's exactly. It wasn't like you were yelling at no, me or no, anything. No, no. It, was it was definitely just like, like, hey, man, just FYI. Two peas in a pod yep. for sure. And then we, I did uh, we did the bitter pill. Um, uh, f- the first thing we did is bitter pill, which was the. At the players' the, ring. Yeah, the songs of Billy Butler as conceptualized by the Mad Men of Oopsie Daisy Inc. was right. the actual title. Bitter Pill and Colon. all that. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, and and it, it got shortened by everyone who came to see it as Bitter Pill. Bitter Pill, right. Yeah. Um, and then it, that those rehearsals were amazing because it was just playing 24 of my songs, which was like, I get to play all my songs with this <laughs> awesome band, right? Yeah, well, I remember, but you and I had... Like we had played together in the middle of that there. I did, that was not the second thing we did together. You and I had done, um, because that were, I remember showing up for that first rehearsal and like talking to you about harmonies and commenting in. And I remember other people there being like, who is this guy that's like correcting Billy? And that wasn't correcting again. It was just nerding out about this stuff. And, and, but no, you and I did, um, uh, uh, what was the, the the thing with the puppets and the red door and the 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 missing winter? Oh, right, I totally so, forgot about. So that. this was a, another musical that you wrote, right, right. That for that, and it was the first performance of it, the first run of it. It was just you and it I. It was just drums and piano yeah. and guitar. Uh, but oh, I played guitar on one or on two one songs. song. But it was we were yeah. the only two musicians. In yes. The pit. Well, it was a workshop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thing, right. But so we had done that right. together. I totally forgot about that. Same. Yeah. But that was in between. Yeah. That's that's what paved the way yep. for Bitter Pill, the the songs of Billy Butler is conceptualized Bello, yeah. by the Mad Men of Oopsie Daisy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then that kind of morphed into um, we did it again somewhere. And then I, I That's right, we did it over in Nashua. Yeah. yeah. And I was writing like crazy, and then I did this. A uh, Shakespeare play called Titus Andronicus, uh, which is basically Shakespeare's uh, Quentin Tarantino film, <laughs> uh, and uh, I wrote all these mu- all these songs for it, and then uh, um, uh, a bunch of traditional stuff. I arranged a bunch of traditional stuff, and then everybody was like, "You need to record this." So we went into the studio, and at the time, I think you mentioned this in the last episode, it was a four piece. At that point, uh, guitar, mandolin. Uh, cello uh, and Emily played ukulele and I played accordion as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we started gigging as that. And then of course I was writing more and more and then Emily was writing more and they were like, we need a drummer. We need a drummer for this. Where's Dave? Yep. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's test out, let's audition Dave. Yeah. So my audition was, was <laughs> at, at Hal on Halloween night. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That was the first gig I played. Yeah. Like not is part of a theater show. Like no, the first 20, normal like twenty nineteen rock band yeah. gig. Yep. Gosh, it was twenty nineteen. It was. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And did, it was. Did you did you audition or consider anybody else? Um, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't audition anybody else. We had considered other people, but um, Dave, in my mind, just I, I work with a lot of drummers in the past. Anyway, um, and I. I I love drums, and I think that's why I kind of gravitated towards the, the bass in the yeah. last so many mm-hmm. years. Uh, just that rhythm section, you know. So piano, you piano is also like yeah. rhythm. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You get that pocket, and yeah. it's just it's just awesome. And Dave and I just, I don't know, we speak the same language with this particular music yep. uh, and this particular project. And I was like, eh. So this is fascinating to me because this particular music, it, is it's so different. Mm. You know, like Dave knowing you playing classic rock covers and stuff, I, you know, did you know you had this wheel in you? And actually before, before you answer that, you know, kudos to all you guys for just putting some new art into people's heads oh, and thanks. ears. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 just, it's just really, I like to say it's not new. It's uh, everything that I love and music. So you yeah. could take that rock and roll drummer. You could take the theatrical front man, uh, you know, uh, my guitar player, uh, the lead guitar player, 
He's not mine, but he is mine. No, he's my also my realtor. He sold me my house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he lives two minutes from me. He's a, a an old school rock and roller, heavy metal guitar player. Um, all, all, you, any 80s licks you want, oh, he'll, he'll yeah. just play them Got all him. day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and straight and, up like metal riffs. Yeah. Like he's well, been, but, but Billy, is the, is the sound that this band makes the sound you heard in your head when you were writing them? Yep. 100%. Oh, that's yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, well, is it, it because you make that happen, or just because you pick the right people to organically elicit that feel? I, I, it's, I think it's a combination of both. I, I would, I would have answered that yeah. the same way. It's both because I definitely uh, rely on collaboration. You know, like Elton John, when he writes a song, he comes in and he's like, "All right, here's the piano and the vocal. Mm -hmm. What are you guys gonna do?" Yeah, everything he's ever written. Yeah, uh, and I learned that in the last few I years. I, I, I didn't yeah. know that about Elton. It, it, blew, it blew my mind because I'm like, that's how it should be. You well, it's get, one way. I mean, well, you I, get the right people in the room, yes, and you want to yes. create really cool stuff. Yeah, you know, you get that talent, and then you get the organic thing there, and it creates all this amazing juice. Yeah. That if if it's the right people and the right music, it's it's just magic. Yeah. You know? I mean, anybody, any really good composer can lay it all down, and then you get the great musicians in the room, and it's still great. But it, you're realizing one vision, not a shared vision. And there's, I, guess, I, I yeah. wouldn't say there's not, there's no, anything I, wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, and I don't, I, nothing wrong with that at all. Oh, but, but it's uh, different. Right, and like any composer relies on arrangers and orchestrators and, and uh, other people to help bring that to life, and a yeah. conductor. Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah, right. You uh, need the conductor at that point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And the conductor really is the one who brings it to life, brings yes. it or brings it to the orchestra. I wonder how many people realize that um, as musicians, as a musician who has been conducted in orchestras, I am, you know, very like viscerally aware of how much influence a conductor has on a given performance of a piece of music. Oh, yeah. Like I, cause I played the same piece of music with the same conductor and had it be different because of them. Yeah. And I've also played the same piece of music with, with different conductors and it's all like, it's literally the same notes on the page and I'm playing the same mm -hmm. notes, but, and so is everybody else. But the, when the way the conductor, you know, I, and there's many different things. It's, yeah, it's bring, finesse. Finesse. It's like driving a, it's like driving a boat. But I don't, I know? wonder how many people realize that, that, the conductor isn't just there as like a metronome. No, no, no not no. even close. He's like the they really leader. are he's, conducting yeah, he's the artistic, in real time. Artistic leader. He's the, um, yeah. he's driving the boat. You know, yeah. it, it doesn't take one person to make a boat go like a big ship. It, yeah. it takes the captain driving the boat and everybody else working together and listening to that. Yeah. So every single conductor is going to have their own kind of finesse. Yeah. When I did my residency with the New Hampshire symphony, uh, playing a bunch of my tunes it was mind-blowing because he took what i wrote and made it for him and the orchestra and it was just it was beautiful it was it was unbelievable it was like un, unlike anything i, I would yeah. ever have, have come up with yeah it's you know? it's it's amazing to take a piano and then my brother did orchestrations uh and then to hear an 80 piece orchestra like bringing it to life in a whole new world is, is absolutely fascinating. And John, who was the conductor was like, I got this Billy. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> you just do your thing. Yeah. You go over there and play your little piano. Yeah. That, that, like, <laughs> but, but, but that little nuance of having a conductor who exudes and, and deserves confidence mm. is huge Yeah, because I've played with conductors who do not, Yes. And oh my gosh, it's yeah. like, it's like playing with, I, I would imagine it's like playing in a rock band with a drummer who is not confident on Ugh. stage. And it's like, oh, what's going to happen next? That's, like That was me as a drummer, as a teenager. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I, like same. And I, I've noticed it even as a, you know, an adult drummer, right. if I, if for whatever reason I am not confident, it might be, I, I don't know the songs and for what, and that night I'm not as confident faking it as right. I might be, or, right. you know, or if, if I'm playing in a band with someone 
who shakes my confidence. It doesn't happen often, but it has happened. Oh, that's the worst. And it's awful. It's like, how do that's I get situation, out of though. my head? Suck right. the life out of the room. But it, but as, but as, when the drummer doesn't have confidence, the band sucks. It does. Like, it just sucks. Yeah. Like, yeah. you got to fake it. Yeah you, like, you, you, yeah, you can't have a bad drummer. If you have a drummer on stage, they need to be the best musician on stage. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. aside from Bitter Pill. Right. Obviously. Yeah. Present <laughs> company excluded, <laughs> yeah. of course. Hey, all right. So I have a, to change, change gears, maybe. Sure. Um, I, I, you, I'm curious about I, I, your songwriting process. Yes. But also just your process of creation. Like you are not speaking of confidence. Mm. You are not someone who is afraid to show influences in the songs you create. Like yeah. you, you write song, some songs that you write sound like something I've heard before, even though I know yeah. you wrote it and you didn't yep. steal anything from you just, Oh no, I did. Well, but yeah. that's the, it, yeah. but you didn't copy something no, from someone. No, 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 no. That's I, I yeah. did. I, yeah. Steel is different. Right. Yeah. But y it's not like you, you, you like copied another song and, and just presented no. it as your own. No, but you're happy. You, you, when something sounds good to you, mm. you don't, feel the need to obscure it just because it might betray an influence. Right. There have been songs <laughs> where it's like, mm, that's a Led Zeppelin. I can't, I have to sure. change it. Like literally, yeah. there was a song I was like, mm, this is straight up end of Stairway to Heaven. I got to okay. change this. You, got, you can't, can't yeah. do that. Right, yeah. right, right. But I did keep in that one particular song, I did keep just one little like four bars yeah. that you're like, oh, I know that. Is that that's I, that's I, is that that's John Bonham. That's yeah. what what is that? What is that? Yeah. yeah. Well, like Betty the Stripper, right. right, is a song that sounds like it came from the 20s. It doesn't sound like uh, a yeah. particular song from the 20s. Well, I play it well the the, the, the it, reason is because the way I played it on the piano right. is uh, uh, the stride style. Yeah. Uh and the chord structure and the whole approach to the song is of that era because I'm a huge fan. I mean, yes. If you listen to any of the songs I wrote, they're all 20s, 30s, 40s. Yeah. Um, uh, but I mean, I, like, I, I like that about your songs. And right. I, I also like playing in a band where th that is happening with the songs because it means that it, they are accessible in some ways. Well, they, like they're the more thing. easily it's, accessible to people, even though they're weird and like, I know, liked, whatever. I liked something that sounds familiar that's it it sounds familiar right yeah because i i'm a storyteller right a, a lot of my my songs are are, are stories right yes because i grew up listening to all these different storytellers sure from uh, harry chapin bob dylan to you know a uh, contemporary uh, uh tom waits um yeah. uh, they're all uh very familiar and and i feel like you know i i I feel like some bands out there and like big bands, like bands that are beyond me and writers beyond me go out of their way not to do that. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, they, I, I'm that, being different and like, mm, no, you're taking something that was probably awesome and ruining it. And changing it for the sake of change, <laughs> right. not for the sake of what sounds good. Right. And that, that's, that, that doesn't serve the piece. That's it. Once the it, piece it's kind is, of, uh, go ahead, Paul. Yeah. It's kind of Tom Waits and Frank Zappa had a baby, right? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Frank Zappa. Zappa is a huge influence. I, <laughs> I blame my brother. My brother is eight years old and I am and a virtuoso violinist. Um, and my mother, too, was a classical pianist, jazz pianist. But She's a great player. She I had the pleasure when we were doing Bitter Pill, the oh, that's songs right. of she Billy came Butler. In, she came sat, in and sat she on came the baby in, And after, yeah. like, post, I think it was like opening night or something, yeah. after the house had cleared, she sat down on the baby grand. She's like, can I play this? And I just happened to be behind my drums, like, you know, packing up oh, my ears or whatever. Beautiful. So I was like, I'm grabbing a pair of brushes. Like, I'm going to jam with Billy's mom. And then and then she started playing that stride. Yep. And I'm like, wait, oh, I know this stride. I know exactly where this came from. <laughs> Which is a kind of a lost uh, art form. Stride yeah. piano is like the original rock and roll instrument. Mm. Uh, you know, turn of the 20th century, everybody yeah. had a piano in their house because we didn't have records. We didn't have... Uh, um, iPhones or any kind of real way to listen to music. So piano was the center of the home when it came to that, to yeah. came to music, to entertainment. But my brother turned me on to Frank Zappa. Um, he didn't turn me on to it. He just played it. Yes. And it was there. And here I am listening to like, 
you know, uh, I can't say some of the songs, really. <laughs> 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 Stuff from Joe's Garage, right? right? There you go. Uh, yeah. um, or even uh, Sheik Your Booty. Some of the, you know, uh, uh, no idea that that was sinking in. Yeah. Right? That, And that's where the kind of weird, bitter, uh, um, joyous anger yep. <laughs> comes from. Because Frank was very, very much that. He, he could, yeah, yeah. yeah. His songs would, would communicate all of that and more simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a good example of somebody who took something familiar and kind of turned it on its head a little bit. Yeah, but it and, still has that familiarity. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. That's why he was successful. If he was just weird for the sake of being weird right. and intentionally not being familiar, right. I think maybe that's what it, it is, is there's some artists out there who who don't want to be familiar. And I mean, like, it's art is art. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So where I was going, thank you for taking that detour Sorry. with me. No, <laughs> I, it's great. I, where I was going with that is, the process of creating a song, I, I'd love to hear your brain uh, on the process of creating a song versus the process of creating an entire musical, which you've oh, that's that takes years sometimes. Right. Yeah. But, but ha like, are you, e even though the time frame <clears throat> is radically different, is there a different approach? Like, a, do you have to be in a different? Yeah logistical, like you have, you're thinking about a lot more. Well, writing, writing songs that are not part of a story or a musical yep. is uh, a little easier because you're focused on the three or four minutes that you're writing. Sure. Right. And sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter, but, um, I don't really have a particular process. A lot of times I, I write more words. Like right now I'm not really writing anything. I'm writing a lot of words. I, okay. have, I have lots and lots and lots of words, lots yeah. of <clears throat> ideas for songs, but no music. And then I'll sit down at the piano, you know, and write a bunch of music, you know, and then record it, blah, 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 forget about it. And then uh, I'll start writing something else on the guitar some, at some point. And they go, hmm, oh, what about these words over here? Uh, that's how I generally work on it. Sometimes it's, I sit down with a guitar and bam, I write a song in five minutes. Sure. And those are the best songs. I was going to say, those <laughs> generally are the best songs. They really are. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. I write what I know, because that's what you're supposed to do. And uh, if- uh, So that's the rule you follow? That's the one? That's the one rule. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I'm an outspoken person. What? Uh, yeah, a little argumentative and and uh, uh, Kurt, and I try to. I th always thought you were Billy. I am. Okay. Yeah, Kurt's my middle name. Um, <laughs> but I, I I I try to keep my opinions into into the music and into, into the work, because to me, the art of expressing yourself through words is kind of lost in music. Now it's, you know, more about, it's no more protest music. The only protest music you really hear now is, is in hip hop. Yeah, yeah. hip hop and rap. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I'm exactly. a huge hip hop fan. Yep. I mean, <laughs> it's, yep. there's some hip hop in our work. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Um, and it goes back to the point of, of why not combine all these different musical styles? Because they all come from the same source. All music we know comes from the same source yeah so why not try to play with a little bit yeah you know hip-hop does that of course hip-hop combines classical it combines blues uh, uh stuff from the 20s 30s 40s it all of that and spoken word yeah. and singing and that's why it's the number one music in the world yeah yeah no it's it's um our music is is definable i think yeah you know, it's it's a little folky, a little punky, a little rock and roll, a little jazz. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think there's one yeah, one term. That's why when you said Paul, when you're like, you're a rock and roll cellist, I'm like, oh, yeah, I kinda am. That's one of the things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not the only thing. No, but, but you it know, is you play that role. And I, I love the cello. I absolutely love it. And it was given to me <clears throat> when we did Titus, and I hadn't played the cello since I was in junior high school. It was one of the only instruments I ever really took like real lessons with and I kind of forgot about it but it all came back to me except for the Boeing Boeing is is it it takes a long time 
my brother was telling me he's been playing violin for 50 years. Um, he was telling me it's taken me 50 years to really understand Boeing. Yeah, I can believe that. You know, it's yeah, there, I mean, there are some things once you've learned one <clears throat> instrument, there are a lot of efficiencies that you now have to play and learn your sure. second instrument. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, you know what the process is like. You also know that it, if you put in time to get, you get the reps, you will get better. And, and generally very quickly, except for certain things. Mm. And, and those certain things take, uh, yeah, I don't, you don't have a mute button over there. That's okay. Okay. You That's can put your hand up. I can mute you. So, okay. you know, there you go. All right. Um, but those, but then there, but then there are the things that there are no shortcuts for, no. and it sounds like the Boeing is in it's, in the, yeah. in that world yeah. one of them. I don't have ten thousand hours in the Boeing. Right, right, exactly. I mean, it's like playing brushes. Yeah, it, it's you know the first time I can hear it in my head yeah. when I'm playing. But that helps, it like does. being able to hear it because at least you know what you're trying to get. But to. I can't. It yeah. doesn't come to the hands as good. Yeah. Though I'm I'm much better than I was a few years ago. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, but I. It's interesting, going back to the cello, is that as a bass, it's not a bass because it's, um, I can't remember where, it's in between the bass and a viola. I think it's an octave up from a bass. Okay. If I'm right, because the, the bottom note, it's, uh, uh, it's in fifths. So the bottom string is a C. It's C, G, D, uh, A. Sure. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So I do. I do. A, I have a little pedal board that has uh, an octavator on it, so I can I can drop to a, a lower octave, which sounds crazy, um, mm-hmm. and a, a little EQing, and I need to boost it because it's uh, I, fr- I kind of Frankenstein'd. Kinda. Yeah. You've got like um, <laughs> you've got command strips on there to hold the, I, yeah, the pickups I together. I do have command strips. Uh, <laughs> holding on uh, a couple of pieces of pine wood that I cut out yeah. that has two bullet base pickups. They're two poles each, right? Yep. Um, and the, because of the arc on the, on the, um, the bridge, because you can't have a flat pickup. Oh, right. Cause it's, it's not a flat, like the, the strings are not no, the same right. height of like there, no, it is an arc. It's an arc. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so that you can bow. For bow. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, I did look into getting it all flattened out, oh. but I was like, I want people to bow. I won't like be you able to st- You just in. said you, you still aren't able to bow. I'm able to bow. I'm just not <laughs> great at it. Yeah, yeah. I keep thinking of my brother. That's the problem. My brother is so good yeah. that I'm just like, I'm never going to be that. Yeah, and, you, you'll be your own version of that. Well, no, I will be better eventually. Oh, but, there it is. Uh, uh, that, those two pickups and a Piazzo pickup that goes on the bridge. Yeah, so I'm able to get a full, fuller sound. It's a decent out of sound it. now. Yeah, it yeah, sounds. It took a little while to get there, but yeah. And yeah. when I bow on it now, because I have a little uh, uh, switcher that and a couple of volume knobs, so I can mix the two together because they're, they're two very different sounding things. Now we're going to get a little gear gab here for a second. Um, I love gear gab. A little nerdy. The way strings work on on plucked instruments uh, on your on your guitar, Paul. Mm-hmm. When when you uh, pluck an instrument or use your pit or pluck a string or hit it with your pick, the string vibrates back and forth, right? Mm-hmm. And that breaks the magnetic field on the pole on your pickup. Mm-hmm. When you bow, it goes up and down. Oh, so it doesn't break the field. So it's harder. That's why it sounds a little odd. Oh, the piazzo pickup picks up the vibration of the instrument, picks up the vibration of the string. Yeah, it's a, on the bridge. a microphone-ish. Yeah, it's a microphone on the bridge. Right. Yeah. So exactly. it picks up the full sound. Uh, right? I'm yeah. curious, is is Bitter Pill very loud on stage? It can be. It can be, yeah. It can be. When Billy doesn't have a bass amp, it's better. <laughs> Everybody's like, turn down the cello. <laughs> yeah. No, like, like the other night, I know you had your bass coming out of a monitor wedge, but you weren't, you were going direct. You I weren't was. using an amp. Right. And I thought stage volume was, I it thought was, it was great. much better. Yeah. 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 It yeah. wasn't the sound I wanted, but I understand that. Yeah. 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 Um, but that's, it's, it's, I've, I've been a few years of that, Paul, creating the, uh, uh, or understanding how all of that works, all the physics yeah. of it work. Well, and how it fits, you know, John and I were having this conversation our guitar player that we mentioned before, I don't think we gave his name, John McCormick. Uh, when we got to the the music hall and I was trying to figure out which snare drum 
worked in the room. I played my my birch snare and uh, and it was like it sounded like it was cracking off the back wall. And so I asked John, I'm like, am I just hearing that weird here upstage or is it that way? And he's like, yeah, he's like, it's a little pingy. So I went out to the car and I grabbed my, um, my, my black beauty, which is, uh, uh, everything I heard over there. Yeah. It's a metal drum. And, uh, and as soon as I hit it, it was like, oh, this is much better. And John even said, yeah, it's much better. And I'm like, yeah. I said, like, you know, oh yeah. I did. It, I don't think about it. The snare did sound good. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. the right drum for yeah. the room. And so we started talking about, and like, you do the same thing, uh, with your guitar. I'm like, I'm sure you don't just leave your guitar, uh, set the way you have it like at home when you're playing. I'm like, I'm sure you tune it to the room. He's like, yeah. He's like, I tune it to the room. And then he said something that I, I thought was really important. He's like, I also have to think about how it's going to sound in the context with the other instruments on oh, stage. Yeah, of course. Yeah. He's like, it can sound great in the room all by itself. He's like, but that's not the point of what we're doing here. Right. We need to be. Well, that's why we have sound check. That's why we have. Yeah, but, but people we listen during the sound check. That, but people don't realize that. That's that your yeah. sound check is. And this is something that Bitter Pill has really worked hard on is yeah. creating a stage volume. Yeah. Even though Dave does in-ears and I tried to do in-ears on this, this gig last week, it just wasn't happening. It, Paul, uh, Paul can, Paul can, 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 um. He struggle. Can, he, oh he no, I've, I've heard struggle. your struggle. Yeah, and it it's it's not a matter of me fighting it. It's just, it just it was wasn't working the way I wanted it to. It wasn't the sound I wanted, and I had to make a decision. Like, no, I'm not playing this awesome gig. Not 100 percent ready. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I it was, told, I do know what you mean. It was yeah. close, but we didn't have time to really dial it all in yeah. and, and make it work. And that's something that you, Dave, even said. It, it took you a year it took to me get a year. comfortable with it. Yeah. And it's not a comfort level thing. Well, it's, it's to get it right. Right. It's exactly. to figure out what, what works. And, and right. it's just a series of failed experiments. Yeah. And the ones that don't fail, it's like, okay, well, that, do that again. And Well, get, part of know. that is cost. Like, yes. I don't want to do it with kind of piecemealing it together. My right. cello is piecemealed enough. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Paul, you've seen pictures, right? Frankincello. Frankincello. Yeah. That's yeah. really what it is. I like it. I've never, uh, I've, I've, I, I looked on YouTube on how to do this and no one really had anything. <laughs> a few people did some things on YouTube. There is a band called uh, the dead South that has a cello player that plays it very similar to me. Yeah. In fact, I reached out to him at one point uh, to ask him some advice. Sure. And he's like, I just use a Piazza pickup. Yeah. Well, that like, makes a big difference. Yeah. Just, I mean, just having that in the blend. Yeah. Yeah. Makes yeah. a difference. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, we ended up like last minute pulling the ears out and just throwing it in the monitors. Uh, I wish I had grabbed the, they have a Mark bass. Uh, I know. And it's just, it's, it sounds so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it really, I wish I could afford it. But yeah. if that's the thing, it's, you know, the eating in ears, it's, it's cost prohibitive I and mean, it's expensive and we don't really make enough money because I, I like to take the money that bitter pill makes and put, put it towards recording. Um, cause we, we're, we're, we're always been, been in the black as far as that's concerned. Yeah. Which is, it's been amazing to yeah. be able to go in the studio for, you know, a week yeah. and pay and, for it and then not come out of our pockets. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it is cause we well, worked as a band to make that money to do that. To do it, sure. Yeah. yeah, but I could take that money and spend it on one set of really quality. Yeah, ears. yeah, it's fair. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but, I think the things I have in my ear, the the they're the the Layla's from from JH Audio. I, I think these are about three grand. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, like that's yeah. what it costs for us to go in the studio for a week. No, I know, and I would yeah. rather spend the money on yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and maybe we get to that level yeah. someday. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I don't really care. Yep. You know, I, I, we can, our stage volume is so good. It is. Everybody is, it is a much, it, like we have people of varying ages, but. Oh yeah. With millenni uh, millennials and, and Gen X. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a, it's a mature band. I mean, I, Paul, you and I were talking about this in the last episode where I was, you know, sharing that how everybody just, uh, just like really pays attention and, and the whole theatrics of it and all that stuff. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a pleasure. But it's also like, cool. we all yeah. want to hear. That's the thing. I, I want to hear everybody else more right. than me. Yeah. Cool. I want to hear what John's doing. Correct. Cause you know, John's has composed some of these beautiful guitar licks. 
Sometimes he changes it up. I want to hear it. Yeah, I want to know. Yeah. I want to be able to give him a look like. I don't want to hear the banjo, but. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> There's one song where I have to crank the banjo. Like, yeah. and it's usually the first song in the set. It's yeah. the bitter real. Oh yeah. Cause yeah. I have to play like Mike and I do some yeah. like rhythmic things together. I actually do like hearing the banjo, but no, if, just... if I have it too loud, it, it, it dominates. Well, and he, he, he doesn't tune it. Well, <laughs> he tunes it at the top of the show and then sometimes, and then doesn't, <laughs> but that's kind of the beauty of it. You know, yeah. it's yeah. Im- imperfect and it's an imperfect instrument. Yes. Uh, and it should be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I love him like a son. Come on now. Yeah. I do. I know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's a, yeah. No, he is. It, it, it's a great mix of people as, as well as just a, as a, as a good, like bl- sound blend. And now there's three songwriters. Yeah. Yeah. You know, John wrote a song for our last record and, uh, and he's got at least one, if not two. Yeah. That yeah. new, new song is awesome. killer. Awesome. Song. It's killer. I can't wait. To play I was hoping we would play it the other mm, night. No, I know, I know no, it was no, no, smart no. that we didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I no. Tomer yeah. was like, how does that song go? He's never heard it before. Never heard it. Literally. Like he missed the rehearsal. <laughs> and then John's like, oh, we should play that song. I'm like, mm. I don't know who poo-pooed it, but Yeah, I don't know. It might have been somebody Tomer. smart. Probably Tomer. He's yeah, probably the smartest. He's smart. the sm- he is he the really responsible is the, one. He's the smartest person in the band. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's Dutch. I he's mean, Dutch. He's Dutch. Yeah. yeah that's how it works. Yeah. What does he play? He plays acoustic guitar. He was, when I played, like, when I first joined this, like, the gigging as a rock band version of Bitter Pill, that Halloween gig, and for a few, you know, gigs thereafter, Tomer is the reason I felt confident on stage. Speaking of confident drummers, Oh, really? Oh, he conducted me oh, yes. through every... Yeah change and mm-hmm. twist like i knew that he wouldn't forget about me because i can go on stage like i've yeah. done it where i go on stage and the guitar player is like yeah man i got you and then the guitar player does what the guitar player always does and is singing the songs and is you yeah. know hamming for the camera or whatever and it's like hey it, what you remember you stopped and dave yeah. kept going why because you didn't tell me to stop <laughs> you know and, and uh, it happens tomer, tomer, the tomer was on it he I, never I, misses it yeah I, tomer is 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 kind of the backbone there when it yeah. comes to that yeah, sure. and I mean, I mean I even t- even to this day, he I, and I, I will look at each other for ends sure. of songs, even though we both know it's yeah. like, yeah, thanks, man. I've turned to him, I don't know how many times, yeah. and, and be like, "Will you take t- take care of John on this, please?" We t- yeah, like, we take over. I gotta, I gotta do this. Yeah, yeah, I gotta go sing, or I whatever. gotta go sing. Yeah. yeah, or I gotta go rap, or I gotta yeah. go. You know, no, he's yeah, he is he is he is the glue. Yeah. And I don't know if I've I, ever asked you guys this, but does Bitter Pill have covers in their in their repertoire? Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Lots of them. Yeah, a whole yeah. bunch. Give me, give me, give me your top three. Many of the moocher. Yep, is probably the greatest song ever written. Yep, ever. Uh, wow, dude! Like everybody knows it. Everybody knows it, and the people who don't know it know it. It's familiar, regardless. Right, yeah. and it's one of those songs, it's like the sing along songs, you know, yeah. uh, that just elevates everything. It elevates the so, mood and the fun. And uh, I mean, how did Minnie and the Moocher become a bitter pill song? I was working in New York. Uh, I had written a bunch of music for this uh, show called The Midnight Frolic, Ziegfeld's Midnight Frolic. And it was an immersive show, kind of like Sleep No More, Queen of the Night. <clears throat> and my por- portion of it was an immersive uh, theatrical thing. Uh, part of my gig ended. Uh, and she, uh, she wanted, uh, the, the, the creator wanted uh, a song to end this one portion of the thing that ended. And so I was like, all right, let's, let's do mini. And she's like, oh yeah, it's a good idea. The first night we did it, there was a thousand people singing along with me. Right. And it was incredible. And it just kind of stuck in my craw. And I've always been a huge fan of Cab Calloway. I discovered Cab Calloway on Sesame Street of all places. <laughs> Um, and I just, I was always a huge fan of Cab Calloway growing up and my mom, you know, was a fan, St. James Infirmary, yeah, yeah. Moocher, um, and just the, the whole showmanship of it. And, uh, I don't know why we put it in one night cause I was like, guys, this is three chords, uh, and the truth, <laughs> uh, it's super easy. Let's try it. And we did it and we played it. I don't remember what gig we played it at, but everybody 
inside, outside. Of the mind, yeah. Sing, yeah, yeah, it's great. Along. It's a it's a perfect way to end the show. Now I'm not saying it's like the this brilliant uh, composition. No, <laughs> but but it, but it kind of is. Name a, another pop song that does that. Yeah, you know, maybe the Neil Diamond. Uh, maybe don't Sweet stop Car- believing. Maybe mm-hmm. Sweet Caroline. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but who did it first? Yeah, Cab Calloway, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do uh, a Tom Waits tune. We've been trying to get the. I've been trying to get the band to do another one. Emily too. Yeah, another Tom Waits song. What should um, you do? Uh, get behind the mule. It's kind of obscure. Yeah. It's not one of his big hits, but we don't play it like n- we play nothing. Yeah. Even close. Cause yeah. Emily sings it. Right. <laughs> Same question. Did you like, how did you choose it? And, and did you just throw it out there and let everybody put their fingerprint on it and see what came out? Is that, that was Emily. How did, how, oh yeah. Emily. I know that. Yeah. Uh. I was like, we should do a Tom Waits tune. And she's like, Oh, we got to do get behind the mule. I was like, that's wow. an odd one. Yeah. Huh. So I was like, all right. And we do kind of a, Jam, this is like our jam band moment. Right. <laughs> and it's awesome because we just, we go crazy with it. Uh, um, and it's so much fun. We could do whatever we want with it. It's always yep. changing. Whatever happens is what happens. Yeah, yeah. Time signatures change in the middle of it. Uh, we go off into these weird yeah. psychedelic things. Uh, we do that. We haven't played it in a while because we played it a million times. No, we played it Saturday night. No, I'm talking about another song. Oh. Um, uh, the haunted wind chimes out of Colorado, which I don't think are together anymore, which is I don't, really I think unfortunate. You're right. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the name of the song? Find a door. Find a door. Yeah. Uh, great, great band. Like the the songwriting, the singing, the playing. The playing is very rudimentary in that band, and it's very we're we're similar in that way. Though we have John McCormick, who is a ridiculous guitar player, um, but a really really uh, kick-ass band out of, of Colorado, very folky, mm-hmm. like traditional. Yeah, folk. they're 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 pretty close to Bitter Pill. They, they like in the yeah. same world. Oh as, no, what, like instrument instrumentation wise and and kind even of the sensibilities as, the wise. aesthetic yeah. too. I mean, the name Haunted Wind Chimes. Yeah, I mean, come on. Same world as Bitter Pill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what else do we play? Uh, we we just added Rebel Girl from Bikini oh, Kill. Right. Yep. Right, a punk rock song. Yeah, we're kind of punk folk, I guess. Yeah, you know, th- yeah. I'm I'm definitely an old school punker, goth kid. I was more of a goth kid. We we were playing um, the summer of 21. We we played 2021, um, uh, because we weren't alive 100 years prior to that. We were playing uh, uh midnight that, special, yeah, midnight special, quite yeah. a bit. That that went over well. Well, when my dad died, I was like, I. I played it at his funeral because right. he loved Creedence. I actually worked at a concert. Uh, um, I worked for the Brooklyn Concert Series uh, yep. 2009, and I brought my dad down. He's a huge Creedence Clearwater fan. The only original member left in that at that time was the drummer, but I got him backstage. He got to meet him. And That's cool. It was super cool. But when he died, I, I played the song, and I was like, we we had a we had this is a set list. It's a yeah. great song. Yeah. Um, and it always went over well. It's a it's great a, tune. And we played like Sympathy for the Devil too. You yeah. deliver that. I love like, that song. Yeah. No, that like it, that song was built for you to deliver. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. I get my 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 Mick Jagger comes out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah, there's there's quite a few covers, but it's not like it's not like a, a top 40 cover thing. No, it's, I get it. It's more like songs that you love i was gonna say these, yeah. our, our covers are our vanity songs if if, if that makes sense in gig gab speak paul oh, totally right like so yeah let me let me just throw a couple of punk folk groups out to see if they would resonate with with you guys sure um velvet underground yeah I I, yeah. I I i give lou reed all the respect in the world i wish he never sang his own songs same as Bob Dylan. <laughs> I wouldn't agree with Bob um, Dylan 100%. I, I'm, not, I'm not asking anyone to. Violent Femme, huge fan. Yeah, yeah. Huge, big influence. Yeah. Yeah, I used to play we, all we those could, songs. We could play Blister. Oh, we could play any of those songs. Oh, any of those I wouldn't songs. play Blister. I'd, I'd play some, I don't know, played Blister, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, pick a song. Yeah. For real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be interesting. <laughs> That's a good idea, Paul. Yeah. All right, what else you got, Paul? These are good ideas. Uh, Misfits. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 mm. Original uh, 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 Glenn Danzig uh, Misfits. All right. 
Uh, Gogol Bordello. Oh, for sure. 100%. A friend of mine just got uh, his touring with them. Oh, no kidding. Uh, as accordion player. Yeah. Oh. She was in the Frolic show I did. Nice. Great. Great. I've, I've been wanting to get her to play with us forever, but she's. Yeah, yeah. She's a real deal living in New York. Now she's touring with them. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And I'll end with a good one. Let's see what we have here. Um, the cramps. Yes. Yes. I, I'm. You, ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. You got. You got one about, more, Paul. Um, using the Googles. I'm looking for one. I'm looking for one more. Yeah. I kind of went through the obvious ones, and now I'm now I'm trying to bring us home here. How about um. Well, like you go back to '60s stuff, like like Phil Ox. Phil Ox. Uh, I'm not familiar. No. Yeah. Oh. All right. Um, Golem, Insomniac, Folklore. Mm. Anything? No. 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 All right. All right. I think I think that the ones I shared are probably the most obvious ones. Yeah. Sure. Um, I mean, I. Yep. I I grew up with. Uh, it's funny too, because like, I'm not a fan of the Grateful Dead. I like I like a lot of their. I grew up with them studio records. Yeah. I, oh, I do like their studio records. I, I mean, but I always I, felt like they needed a producer on stage live. Somebody yeah. to tell them, hey, I mean, do something different. They're, yeah, they're a good example of a, 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 a band that played a lot of covers. Absolutely. I mean, they were technically a cover band. I mean, they had, then they started writing originals. Yes. But, but, same with the Stones, right? Stones yeah. and the Beatles, too. And the Beatles, too. Yeah. 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 Um, I got one. I got one. All right. Flaming Lips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love oh. the Flaming Lips. Yeah, yeah. They, that, and they're still going. They're they're weird. Like they're incredible. Yes, they're a good example of of theatrics. Yes, and great songwriting. I, Bitter I, Pill plays Yoshimi battles the Pink Robot. Oh please! Oh wow! I discovered uh, the Flaming Lips when I was eighteen years old. Uh, I was a DJ at WUNH right oh, down here, the road here. here yeah, 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 yeah. Just just they minutes away. Pink. What was the name of? I can't remember the name of the record, uh, but it was a big red or a big hot pink record that played mm -hmm. backwards. So you put the needle at the end oh, of the wow. record and it would play backwards. That's really cool. the grooves took it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And then I was like, I need to, I need to dig into this band. They're yeah. Who amazing. would do this to yeah. someone? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, 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 I also wow. blame the Seacoast community. Uh, for my music taste. The seacoast of New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I meant to say that. Yeah, no, no, I, I got you. Uh, what, yeah. There was a really strong music scene here in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Um, uh, the Queers, uh, legendary punk rock band, are from yeah. uh, Exeter. Yeah. Uh, the lead singer from the Bruisers, uh, the, the Bruisers, the band, the Bruisers, are from Portsmouth. The lead singer from that was the lead singer, is the lead singer for the Dropkick Murphys. Ah, oh, okay. Mm. Um, it, it's it's incredible. No, there, yeah, there there was it yeah. was it, what the thing is it was it was kind of an enclave of artists and musicians here that nobody really knew about. Yep. And then it became popular. And now it's a multi million dollar little downtown. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it, different all the now. tourists come to you now. But I blame them for a lot of the music. Um, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, you were here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And That's I, what you know, you're immersed in going from Broadway musicals, jazz. Uh, Grateful Dead to The Cure to The Misfits to Dead Kennedys uh, was uh, was a journey. Yeah, man. And I, I you see that in my daughter. Yep. Like, you know, she grew up listening to Cabaret and Into the Woods and all that punk rock <laughs> yep. and all that goth stuff. Yeah. And she became a huge Doc Watson fan. Like, yeah, that's that's an interesting How did that thing. happen? Yep. You know? And Doc Watson, another... It's cool when, Big we, influence. when we get to watch our kids do things like that. Well, it's, like, it's cool when you get to do it with your kid. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nothing I planned. It just, right. It just happened. Yeah. And I've done some incredible things artistically. Nothing will ever top working with her, writing oh, yeah. with her, cool. playing with her. Like it's, it, there's two relationships going on there. There's the uh, parent yeah, of course. And the, the father-daughter relationship. Father-daughter relationship, which is very dynamic. Our relationship's very uh, dynamic. Sure. And it's awesome. And then there's the artist relationship. And they feel equal. Yep. You know? And I feel equal to her. And I think she feels the same way. Yep. Uh, and there's no, 
No, it, it, it's, it doesn't get, there's not a weird vibe. No, there's no friction. There's no ego. No. There's none of that. No. In fact, she has taken more, uh, uh, more of a lead uh, in the band. In the band, for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I don't have to do everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's taken over a lot of the social media stuff. She's great with it. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, organizing some stuff, um, even with impossible <laughs> places. <laughs> You know. We'll see what happens Friday night. Yeah, I'm um, sure I may have a story to tell, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Hopefully oh. I won't get another ear infection. Yeah, no kidding. Um, uh, yeah. But she has really taken the reins, and yeah. that's been my no, plan it's, it's, the whole time. Yeah, no, it's yeah. great. It's um, it's good. And it, I, I enjoy, I, like, having learned how to sing with the two of you, It's it's been a fascinating thing because you've got those blood harmonies and oh yeah that's what beats that man. finding finding how not to mess how to make how to add to that and not yeah. make it worse yeah, and yeah, i think yeah. that my brother who really instilled in me uh how to work with family because mm. we it was yeah. our relationship working together growing up was was rough yeah. yeah it was really really rough and uh but at the same time it was magical because we created really great stuff and we hadn't worked together in 25 years, and yeah. now we're working together on another project. Oh, right? cool. Right? right? And those lessons I took from him and the lessons from now, is it's it's just awesome. It's pretty good. To be able to do that with family, you know? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And that's Talk about writing be. what you know, right? Well, yeah. And it's the way you should be in a band, whether you're a family or not. Oh, well, a band is a family. I mean, we talk about that here. Where, there has you to know, be love and kindness. Yeah. And yeah, you get mad, you fight. Oh, yeah. But everything, you're, you're creating arts you're creating music you're you know you're bringing joy to the world even if it's a sad song you know yeah absolutely uh, sometimes especially if it's a sad song yeah 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 billy thank you this has been awesome did man I talk too much i'm sorry did you talk too much no we, we'll have I, you I back feel like, i feel like i was just, just this is great yeah, right. we, we just need to make sure that we don't turn it into the accidental bitter pill podcast but uh <laughs> <laughs> uh this is great this is awesome where um where do you want people to go if they want to learn more about you and what you're doing? Uh, you can go to bitterpillband.com. There you go. You can go to uh, any of the social medias. We're on TikTok now. Yeah. Uh, Bitter Pill, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's, I forget what it is. Something, I'll, I'll put, I'll put yeah, it in the show notes. I yeah. got a few days before we publish, so I'll, I'll find all the right yeah, things. It's all, yeah, it's yeah, all, all yeah. the stuff's out there. Yeah. And I'm on Facebook, so you can find me there. I'll put your, I'll put your link on Facebook. Yeah. Amazing. You got anything else, Paul, before we uh, no, pull the ripcord here? Billy, super nice to meet you, man. And you take too. good care of my boy, all right? I will. And hopefully we'll get out there someday and yeah, play a game. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be, yeah, yeah. That'd that'd be, be a joy. Awesome. Yeah. Joy. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. We'll tell you where. We'll be, go to the giggabpodcast.com website. Pillgab. Pillgab. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Billy, you got three words of advice for our listeners while you're here? Always be prepared. Ha, ha, ha.